Okay, so this lecture is um, uh, grokking Git by managing Kivitendo. Grokking is a slang English for uh, understanding something really by doing it. If this is, if this is uh, an unknown um, English worm, yes, uh, work. And um, what we'll do is, um, well, I, I'll explain some things on a, on a big point, on a, on a big picture of JIT, and then we'll see how we use this in our open source project, which is named uh, Kivitendo. And just for the question over there, so Kivitendo is a double accounting system, uh, it's a web application, and it's, it's a fork of Alex Office, which was a fork of SQL Ledger. But just, it's not so, so really important. It's only the um, important that you can uh, make uh, bookings and you can create invoices and you can customize invoices and that's that's where then we use some Git branching and so on and so forth. Okay. If you have any questions, maybe my English is too bad, um, or I or something more like on. Um, a logical point, just uh, raise your hand and ask questions. Okay? Great. So far, so far everyone is uh, fine and knows what is going on. It looks good. I see many bright eyes. All right. Um, so, in uh, British English, git is a synonym for idiot. That's a, it's a good joking start. And uh, because of that, it was written by Linus Torvalds, and he said uh, he is an egoistical bastard, and he names all his project after himself, and that's why he named the project uh, Idiot. And uh, actually, this is, uh, if, if you don't know it, it's the uh, source versioning system for the Linux kernel, and um, the history of that was um, Linux uh, used their um, commercial system named BitKeeper, and uh, everyone was mocking around, ah, 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 it's not open source. And then uh, he said, okay, mm, I cannot use it for free anymore because BitKeeper uh, is not giving it me anymore for free, so I will just stop uh, writing code for the kernel. I just write my own versioning system, and he named it Git. In short, yeah, yeah, uh, in, yeah. Well, so because it's a, yeah, it's a synonym for idiot, uh, I thought it fits for me because uh, I uh, usually forget stuff I write. So back in time and uh, I need something to keep track of and something to remind me. And with uh, where most of the bullet points here uh, are, commonly known to uh, every kind of versioning system, but some kind, so, um, some, some points are, are easier in Git, or e anyway, it's quite hard um, to change history in Git because every commit is unique. That's, that's uh, some major advantage of Git. And um, yeah, the main point for me is it does not forget anything, so I do. Um, I can easily find everything I have done or others have done. Um, well, you can break stuff, but it's if you it's easy to not break it if you know some uh, common concepts, and uh, yeah, everyone can do anything. This is a dis and distributed, so clone is a full backup. Um, I have quite a red, uh, quite a good uh, synonym for this. It's like um, having a uh, having a linear game. You have to choose. Uh, you have to um, solve, and at some kind you just make safe games to solve it. And uh, if you write code, you have uh, a multiplayer game, and you in Git you have every saved game of every uh, player, and you can make a copy of every safe game from every player who ever played that game. So this is quite a powerful uh, image to consider, and uh, this is. This was quite, it's quite the truth, so. Anyway, we won't go that deep into the system, but I will just give you um, three major ideas where we can use this for um, 
project extensions because that's just to, to get something uh, to grasp. So if you just Google, yeah, Git is better than X because it has all this stuff. You can, you, know, you can easily just Google this by yourself. This was my first hit I got when I just Googled why Git is better. The slides will be online also somewhere also. So. Um, and I pick one, one point, um, I pick any workflow just to, to give you one idea why this is better than any other systems or you can uh, implement many workflows. You can implement a an, uh, an centralized server workflow like in Subversion. In Subversion you just have one server and you have many, okay I see here, you have many developers who just have to synchronize with the server and they have to fetch and pull every time to the server. And if the server breaks or something, it's uh, the, well, the version systems is not in sync anymore and the project may uh, delay. So the, the development may be delay. So this is one workflow you can use. Mm, and you, just to give you the idea, you can uh, even define uh, kernel dev workflows where you have some master like Linus Torvalds who can only access to the uh, repository and he just gives someone else, the lieutenant uh, person, um, uh, access to some more developers and here is a quality a QA and he does the next QA and then it, is, it will be in the stable branch. So this is um, more or less one, of, one complexer kind you can make. You can see that developer named N he uh, seems to be better than developer 2 because he can uh, check into Linus uh, repository directly and so on. You can, you can define such a workflow with Git as well. So this is um, some theoretical stuff. Now I go to the point. We use uh, Git for our web-based application Kivitendo. And we have, uh, uh, yeah, we have a project on GitHub, and we have um, release candidates and beta and stable versions, and they're being managed by a timeline just on GitHub. And we have uh, um, the centralized server approach, so everyone can commit, like five persons, and if something goes boom, then usually some other developer just reverts it, or they. Uh, communicate via IRC or whatever. So this is our case in our Git versioning system. Okay. Ah, sorry, I forgot to ask. So I have no clue. So on what kind of level uh, are you into Git? He's always uh, nodding. So he <laughs> he seems to be uh, he agrees with me. That's fine. So uh, um, is anyone using Git right now? Okay. Okay, and uh, that's good too. <laughs> okay, and you use it for your own project or for um, contribute to some open source projects or what do you do? Or even or it's also on GitHub. Hmm? All three. All three. All three. Okay. 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 The project on GitHub. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially how you deal with pull requests if you, if you don't like them, how you block them, how you see the differences, uh, the files changed. Uh, find it also difficult to work with. Uh, okay, we, I'll, we, we can give some advice on that point, but I'll postpone uh, the answer. Uh, right now, I'll just give you the information. We, uh, before we use Git, we also use Subversion. And this was uh, fine for me because Subversion with, a, with this approach is okay. And if it's just in a, um, so, somewhere in, on a server in a company, that's fine. But uh, Git gives me far more uh, options, uh, more power in my feeling. And um, you can do some things with Git you cannot do with Subversion. Um, I'll, 
uh, I will show some, yeah, I, will, I will make some stuff with rebasing. I'm quite sure you cannot do this with subversion, so not so comfortably. Okay, now for some basic stuffs. Um, so I will, yeah, we'll go into the practical approach. We'll just clone our project. I, I prepared some stuff live. Let's see if this works. <laughs> and then we go on. So. Oh, sorry, no one can see this. Okay, so now I just do a simple git clone without um, write access. So this is a Now, okay, this is a Perl project, so we have some Perl files and so on and so forth. And uh, I now have all the commits and everything which is in the major uh, release line, which is uh, posted on uh, GitHub, and which is actually the um, full working uh, developer release. So the next thing I, th I I'm, I'm, yeah, we'll see. So what, what do I do next? I check uh, git log, like in subversion, you can see the, the last commit here, and what uh, happens. Um, so if you use git tag, you can see what kind of major releases are there. So this is, um, and is git branch, you can see on what branch you are. This is actually the current master, so we haven't created the local branch yet. Okay, everyone follows so far? It's quite basic stuff, okay. Um, so what's the purpose right now? If I have a client uh, a new pro and I want to do a new project, um, it's best to start not with the developer branch, so we, but uh, we do not, well actually we just install using everything with Git, so we just check out the latest stable release, and we, I just I do, do a branch then. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so now I checked out the release 3.0. Uh, we are in a somewhat detached state, so we are not on a current uh, branch. Can hmm? uh, no, it's, it's, it's okay for you. Uh, because, yeah, okay, thank you. So we are, okay, I checked out this release, so we are in detached head. We can check with a branch. So we are detached from release 3.3, so here we are. And then we just create a new branch with it.
So now we have created a local branch named Froscon. And what I want is that the re series is in that branch. So we. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. So we have a new local branch. No, no, this is my. Yes. Yes. No, it's not. No, I, I'll just wait one. Give me 30 seconds. I go back to the slides and then it'll be probably more clearer. Okay, so we are we have a new branch. The last commit is um, from 2012, so that's actually the last commit from the release 3.00. And so what I did here, if we check on branch, then we have we are uh, this indicates we are on this branch, and we are in the version named text 3.00. To make it more clear, so I can switch branches right now. So okay. Well, this is now the branch master. We are on that branch. We check with git log. We are in 2014. This is the last commit right now. So this is actually the full clone from the from GitHub. Okay. Right. Yeah, okay, this is a commit uh, message. There was a typo in some translation. Okay, yeah, this is a commit hash, this, this is unique, and this is a commit messages and the commit date and so on. I can see all text. Okay. Okay, now we have created our own local branch with a specific release. So from that point, we can start to do something uh, individual from the, for the project on a stable release. Um, and this is quite, this is actually quite convenient because uh, I now can always cherry pick from the master if I want to and and do whatever kind of uh, modifications. So usually, so the point here is, if I just check out the master without creating a branch, and I just modify some stuff like uh, <coughs> modifying templates or whatever kind I need for the project, uh, this will, I cannot uh, commit them because I don't want them in the major release. I don't want uh, customized templates for, uh, in the major on GitHub. And uh, that's why I created a branch. Everyone with me so far? I have some slides as well to. Uh, okay. okay, I changed. I already did this because this is a full installation of Kivitendo. So this is configured from the web server locally, so we can see if we change something in for to the real for the real process then. Hmm? Hmm? No, 
It's just uh, for convenience. Just to see, usually, uh, anyway, the permissions are on VBV data, so just for the web server and so on. And you uh, actually, I just um, modified some stuff. You need to modify some uh, uh, permissions, and so that is working. So I already did this because this has nothing to do with Git at all. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, we did that. We, we clone, okay, you clone, anyway, it's always the same. You clone co completely from GitHub or whatever kind, and then you see a text, you can see the slot where you are, and then you check out uh, a specific versions. If, it, if it's text, then you can check, see, and then you check out a new branch, and then you can do a branch. And then you have, everything is prepared that you only work in your lo local branch without <coughs> disturbing anyone else, even if you commit. So that's, that's the point here. So, okay, now um, there are three cases. If I modify the source, what may happen? Uh, if I upgrade to the next version, my extensions may never conflict, always conflict, or may not conflict. Anyone knows what I'm talking about here? Or, or, or anyone? Other way around, uh, any questions? Okay, let's see. Uh, what's the case never conflict? Ah no, <laughs> no no no. You you modify something in your in your working directory and it will it will never conflict. Mm, yes, that's a good. That's, uh, yeah, so everything that's not uh, that ne that needs not to be maintained via uh, versioning system. That's usually dead versioning, and. Um, in my case, in custom templates or themes, if you have uh, themes, uh, you can you, you can add um, yeah your own themes and so on, and you won't you are not really uh, no, you won't check them in into GitHub. Um, in a more uh, common way, it's everything which is not uh, under version control in your repo means that everything every directory or every uh, file which is not known to Git. How can we make a file known to Git? We use uh, git add. Let's see. Uh, if you don't know, if you use, so you can, you can check. Okay, you can check if you have anything uh, dirty or not uh, checked in with git status minus a u and o. And if you just use git status minus u, you can see, okay, I have a template directory named frostcon, which is not committed. So in this template directory in frostcon, there are some uh, LaTeX uh, print templates for, for, for invoices. So these are, these are customized. So this is a new directory, and they are not uh, in the in the main repository. Okay, so this is actually the application. This is a branch in that specific version. It's a bit 
cumbersome right now. Anyway, I just add some stuff. <coughs> Now we have a PDF. This is created by a LaTeX. The LaTeX templates are in the Frostcon template directory, and they are uh, out of the box, so more or less from the GitHub. What we see here is this. This is a, here are some identity stuff, and here's a logo. I would like to customize this for Frostcon right now. Um, that we have something to commit. What I do first is um, I add uh, the current directory to my local branch. And then I make a Just change some metadata right now. Whatever is this EV. Okay, that'll that'll be enough right now. Okay, you can Okay, here it is. I'd like to uh, visualize uh, my commits right now. I usually use, uh, okay, anyway, I use VI for my, it's my favorite editor. And I use, um, for diff, I just make an extension to use vimdiff so I can uh, visualize what I, what I, what I did, or uh, what's the difference between the original file and the next one, so it's easier for my mind. So I see, okay, I changed uh, the, this command, this template command uh, company to another company, so that's fine for me. <coughs> So I'm quite sure I want to commit that. So now I have uh, made git commit, just I typed in the entire template here, and you can see um, what's new here. So this is everything is new because I just added this, and there's one div, there is the identity for the template system, so that's fine with me. I just give it a commit message. Okay, so we have made our first commit in our branch. We can see this with git log. So this is the last commit on the release 3.0, and here's my first commit on that branch for this customer project. And I changed the identity of the company. And this is case one, uh, it may never conflict, because we added a new subdirectory for the template system, well in this case, for the um, print template system for the invoice, and this will never conflict. So this is now totally safe to be there. It has a unique commit hash, and that's it. 
Um, I skip the point, okay, we can replace logo and whatever kind of uh, stuff we want. I go to the next case. Okay, it may never conflict. We had that case. Uh, the next case is it will always conflict. Can anyone think of a case what, what will always conflict? <coughs> we, uh, uh, although it will always conflict if I upgrade to the next version. It's a bit tricky. Any idea? I take bad ideas. I take any any hint. Okay, this will always conflict. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, if I delete files, uh, it will always conflict. Sure. No, but I just alter some. No, I uh, always conflict. In this case, there's a, for example, there's a version just to play all hard coded information which will change every release like a change log, for example. In our case, because in every release we make a new change log, so we always conflict. And there's a version file just like in, in Debian, etc version. We have that um, case also, and this is a 3.00. And I just um, make a new version here, and this will always conflict, because it's a, as a best practice is always to set up a new version number if I take a new release. And if I modify that file, it will always really always conflict then. This, this, so this, this case really depends on the project or how you, uh, what your release management is doing then. And um, yeah, okay, and, the, and the, the next case is it may conflict, what's that? Yeah, oh, yeah, ex exactly. Oh, that's one. So all project source files I modify, which are already there and I, um, yeah, in that case many Perl files. Okay. Um, I get to the point, let's see. Oops. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, here is a, my version file. You can see a 3.00. Because my customer wants to have his own project version, I just add uh, it's minus first com. Okay, that's done. You can see with git status. Changed files here. I commit that file, single commit. So done. If I check my log, I can see okay, this was the next commit. This commit will always conflict if I do a um, rebase or emerging against the next stable version. And now for some modification in some source files. Let's see, I pick. Report on customers. Let's 
see. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so here are default uh, checkboxes right now. I want to disable telephone and mail. So I don't. Uh, so anyway. My customer, my client gives me a call. Oh, I hate this uh, report because everywhere I click on next, I always see telephone and email, and no one is filling that data in our case. Uh, please make a change to uh, GitHub and uh, remove those uh, checked box we don't, because we don't need them. So this is, uh, we have a, a customer or a client who says, okay, I don't need that. And um, sometimes it's uh, like, okay, uh, everyone uh, else in the world should have my opinion on this kind of checkboxes or on this kind of report. And so the easy case is then, okay, uh, I have a project branch or a customer branch, and they can, can say, okay, okay, for you in the project branch, I disable the checkboxes. That's fine. I have a, a commit. That's okay. And I have a branch, and, and it's, it's fine for me then. So this is a sheep cheapest solution to, to, help, to get a project going. It's something kind to do with marketing and so on, I suppose. And we'll do that. <coughs> this is also a templates file, but this is a file maintained by JIT. Sorry, I'm too lazy to write. Okay, this is a HTML template um, system named uh, So we are here, include in report and Bericht aufnehmen, include in report here and the next year, or oh, no, it's just phone, that's why. Uh, okay, I have the HTML tag here. I just remove the checked. Let's see if I edited the right file. <laughs> okay, so it's gone. Okay. So I don't like contact and uh, zip code is, oh yes, yeah, email I said. Okay, we check. Uh, okay, I usually use git diff to see uh, what I did. Okay, yeah, okay, you cannot really see, but you can guess you can always, okay, that line is uh, changed. That's contact, phone. And email. If you scroll. Now this is the case in the old, in the original version here. Is the checked still active, and uh, in my modification, it's gone. This is just for me. So I always use git diff to be double safe. Uh, I only edit the kind of stuff uh, I want to edit and modify, and I also do and check on the um, <coughs> web applications if I just got it right. For the uh, graphical output, for uh, no.
Okay, now I have that uh, also committed. <coughs> and yeah, so all my commits are there. I have three cases, uh, never conflict, it may conflict, and it will definitely conflict. Okay, what, what will happen next? So the project is done, so the minimum uh, customization is over. So what, what will probably the next uh, thing to happen? Hmm? It's already checked in. Okay, I, 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 okay, let's say I'm on the, on a server where the customer is uh, using this. I, it's, it's locally checked in, so it's on my, it's, uh, on my uh, project server and it's, uh, it's checked in on that and the customer is happy. He doesn't see those uh, checkbox there. He has uh, his own version number. He can well, we alter some more identical stuff uh, like changing logo and so on and so forth. That, that's done. So well, what will happen next? That's no, yeah, no, you don't. No, no. It's uh, I just keep those changes in my local branch. So we, I don't want. To, I can. I can also push this branch to GitHub, but it doesn't make sense. Uh, well, it it's, uh, doesn't make sense for the customer project. If it's if it's not real, it's, if it's not a real benefit for um, the project in general, uh, I do not. Uh, I do not push this to uh, back to GitHub. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. Usually. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. Um, the server will be backed up anyway. So th this is so this is this is fine. If if I want to yeah if I want to back up this this is, yeah just on one node on one server this will be, but this is another um, case. So that's that's fine. That's fine for the customer and fine for me. It will be backed up in the in the normal backup uh, procedure and that's fine. Yeah. Yes, uh, he, well, he will work with the project and after one or two years, he will find out, okay, there is a new release and the new release has feature X and uh, that cool feature and he uh, really needs a new version. And um, so, you, so what, what do we do now? Okay, I just visualized this. This was the last commit on 3.00. This is a 2012 commit from the Reese 3.0. And the yellow commits are, are my uh, branches, branch commits. And Two years later, I completely forget the old extensions and the customer wants to upgrade safely to the current version. Luckily, I have a project branch with Git. And um, what I do, or what I always do, and I find very convenient, and it, I don't know if you do that, I rebase against master. Um, and this is like, I check out the master, I make a pull from the GitHub, and then I check out, I go switch back to my local branch, yeah. and then I rebase against master. So, did anyone do this before, rebasing? You did. Okay, you usually merge. Or did anyone merge with JIT? Oh, yeah, okay, merges, yeah, okay, that's, uh, yeah. The, no, um, the main advantage of rebasing is, uh, I, this is uh, visualized here, that um, if you merge, uh, in, sub, in subversion, this is the case, you merge at a specific point of time back in history. So after the merge is done, you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, see what, what was the original intent of the commit. Because it will, uh, if there is some more modification on the same file, it will it will move back in time. It will, uh, like on an archaeological type uh, of saying, it will go deeper in the ground. You have to dig uh, harder and harder. And if you re if you rebase, the concept is is uh, different, because um, all the the branch will be put on the head, on the current head you are rebasing against. 
is a major advantage here. Um, so my right now, if you merge this in, let's say it was in two, it was in 2012. So I do make a, um, a merge against the current version. So I have to integrate this uh, commit in my branch against the current version, and then every everything uh, goes on top of that of that state. Yes. And if you rebase, it's the other way around. So he skips all the the branch git and then just goes to the 2014 version to the uh, current version, and then. He rewinds. He rewinds the, my own branch against the current head. So this means all these commits will be put on top at the exactly uh, point of time I'm, I'm right in. This is a major advantage. So the hash keys will be all uh, the hash identifier is still there, and my original commits uh, are also there. So if if it conflicts, it's usually easier to um, see where the conflict is. And it's a bit um, <laughs> uh, more convenient on a graphical point of view. If you have some graphical stuff of your um, versioning system, you just see, okay, this is, these are all the customers' ex extension. They are replayed after the, um, after the uh, upgrade for the next version. We, we see that in practice right now. Okay. Okay, uh, anyone remembers the commands I, I, I had on the slide? So what was the first thing to do? Hmm? Uh, no, there was one step before. Hmm? Yes. So we haven't touched this uh, project for two years. So first we check out our master and we make a pull against the current um, repo. So, so this is uh, now we get all the commits from two years against the major release. We have them in master with uh, commits and uh, unique hashes. Okay, that's the first step. Now, the if the customer is now used to this, he will it won't work anyway. So uh, he's, he he is we are now in some undefined state without the. Uh, Customer extensions, and we have a current. Uh, we have the current version. We can see we are on master. We can easily check back to the branch here. We are still in the 3.0 uh, version. Everything's fine, but we just pulled the master to get all the commits and all the actual changes from the last two years. Okay, next step. Yeah, which one? Yeah, okay, first one, yes. Okay, and now? Yeah, yes. Okay, what will probably happen? We have three cases. <laughs> yeah, at least one. So we may get two, and we, and with the, Okay, uh, you can do this also. Uh, you can, but this w this is a bit uh, difficult. We, um, if I do against the actual current release, yeah, um, I make a new branch with the release name, and then I can I, then I can uh, rebase against the uh, actual release. The question is because the customer yeah. Only one on the yeah, yeah, yeah. You are definitely right. That's all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no. Uh, you would. Just for to cut it short, so you would do an, an extra step there. You would create a new branch with a current version, just to be sure. Oh, but sometimes it's not necessary. It depends on the state of the developer. Um, uh, try, uh, uh, yeah. So uh, developer is fine. So we check that with a customer. We will base against master with the current developer system. Okay, and that's. Uh, so, 
we'll see we have a conflict. And we'll use um, like out, get merge to guess. Okay, so uh, what's here? What the we'll see um, the current head. So this is the developer version. So we the version file is at 3.10 unstable. This is that box. We can see our uh, modification on the branch. This is a Froscon branch right here. And we can see what was there before we did that modification. And on that box, uh, in my editor, we, can, uh, we, uh, we will decide what to do with this conflict. So any ideas what to do? Hmm? Yeah. Great. <laughs> okay, this means there is a, here's a, um, this, I don't know, this uh, Spitze Klammern <laughs> uh, means there, this is a conflict right now. At that point, I delete that. Okay, yes, your project is now in 3.1 customer. We have a new release only made for you. Great. And that's fine. Every, everyone with me so far? Okay, that's, there. that's right now the developer. That was our change. That was before the change. And that's how I, Git integrator, decide to handle this conflict. No, he said, uh, I forgot. I said it's git rebase me minus minus continue. I guess it's true. Okay, and that's it. Uh, yeah, sometimes you have to do that. Um, yeah, you, uh, perhaps this is already, uh, let's see, what's the look? No, that's okay. In that case, we didn't need that. Sometimes you have to do this. I'm not quite sure when this is the case. Maybe it's only because of one line, I don't know. Okay. But right now, this is the um, latest developer commit. And you can see it's not a merge. We he did the our commits after the after the last uh, pulled master commit. Okay, we had no conflict here because it was conflict free. Project version changed. It was a it was a case where uh, had to be a conflict, and the default report is still um, working. And so there was no change in that in that version. Okay. Okay, just uh, as a reminder, we checked out master, we pulled, we can, actually we have to always pull, and here we can do another branch with a, with a release tag, whatever, and then we check out our uh, local branch, and then we rebase against master or the st uh, current stable, whatever kind of commit where we, where we want to rebase it. And if we, okay, this is not, if you want to use uh, have a visual editor, you can use git k, if this is not known, so this is the output from Git K. We can check this also. You can see this is our here's the latest commit we rebased, and yeah, and you can see here is the master. We that was the point of commit where we. We base again, and you can see we have three 
commits, which I did here, live here, um, added to those uh, branch. Mm. So we have that here. Mm. Just to be complete, so my git config use, which was not explained in this uh, live demo, uh, this is the RDISD just to use git diff. You can configure whatever editor you want to have. Do uh, you need to have some names and emails just to do commits with git anyway? And um, <coughs> best online tutorial work is play. I found right now in short of time was that one. He had this analogy with uh, using safe games and it's a multiplayer game and everyone plays uh, around the world and they get all the safe games from everyone. So this was quite a nice analogy. Um, so if you want to dig deeper into that, use that. And if you, whenever you do s at least some tiny custom modifications for a project, uh, just take those uh, half hour extra time to make a branch and to commit against this branch and uh, best case with git and then you have uh, saved perhaps a, so a lot of brain cycles here uh, two years later if you cannot remember what I changed for that customer or at that point of time. Okay, great. So that's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that was my major, major point. So. Yeah, then thanks to you, thanks for your time and uh, questions.